afternoon everybody I'm Bobby J and today I'm working on a trailer an old trailer a trailer that is probably 40 years old at this point and the wiring in this old trailer is well overdue for being replaced and I've been putting it off putting it off and it's time it's time for it to come out I'm not going another season with the old wiring and let me show you some of the problems of the reason why this wiring needs to come out and why I'm going to rewire this trailer so in this video I'm going to show you how to take an old trailer that's a good trailer a solid trailer that's got good bones in it and pull all the wiring out and run all new wiring and how to do it the right way with a modern style wiring system that's grounded well and is safe and, and will be protected for a long time and give you options to pull off of later in case you need to add more accessories. So let me show you here what, what I'm dealing with. So this is all, I mean a lot of this I have, have replaced pieces of it over the years, but we've got loom, nothing wrong with loom. Loom is great under the hood. Um, even under the trailer trailer deck loom is fine. I don't like loom up in the neck uh, Because you wind up with stuff like this, you know electrical tape fails the wiring loom moves and before long you've got a Three five whatever inch long section of wiring that's exposed and especially too with all this cheap Chinese electrical uh, Tape that people are using I only use 3m. It's the good stuff. It's worth a couple of extra bucks for so, you know, splices like this, this is how this is how they did stuff a long time ago. I mean, not to say that I'm not going to splice here and there, but again, we're going to show I'm going to show you how to run this where you're coming out of a junction box and going to where you need to go. Um, here's our pigtail. See, these are starting to fail. If you look close here, this is all wanting to fail this is all from sun damage sitting out and you know on one hand though not bad for 40 years um over here now this is the scary stuff here look at this okay that's that's the sc scary stuff is when you start and what this leads to is this leads to running down a rural two-lane highway at four in the morning and you've got doubles and you're trying to get somewhere you got to get a crew that's waiting for you get to them and all of a sudden you lose all your clearance lights ask me how i know because it happened obviously and all of a sudden i'm pitch black behind the truck and i've got uh, what do i got 55 feet where the trailer or something so that's not good and it was from crap like this so that's why this all needs to come out you can see this loom is all deformed and falling apart and running down here I have already gotten started so I have ran see this is new this is Phillips it's not cheap but it's the good stuff this is Phillips cord this is 10 gauge wire inside here and there it's seven wire I need seven wire you might be able to get away with six depending on if you need a battery hot in your trailer or if you're not running backup lights then you don't need seven wires so um, running down here we've got a loop there there's another one down here and we're coming down let's get this crapola out of there there we go we're coming down and I got a Phillips junction box installed and so I've already got my seven-way cord that goes from the plug that plugs into the truck up through the neck and everything here it is coming in from the truck and then this lights up my main junction box and from here then I come out of here and I go every which direction to all the accessories that are in the trailer but again you know Here's these scotch lock deals. Um, I'm not a fan of these. Now, they have held up pretty well in this trailer. Again, this wiring is old, but I don't normally have the best luck with, with scotch, those stupid scotch taps or whatever. Um, and again, you know, loom, this is way. See, there you go. So that's what happens. You wind up with little spots that open get opened up. And... Um, and then I actually had a wire fail 
my dad ran this through he put a piece of pipe up here and ran all the wiring down through the t uh, through the pipe and i had to last year run a new wire all the way along here in a pinch real quick as i lost lost a left blinker so i had to run like i said a new wire real fast so like i said it's time for all this to come out start over and let me give a little detail here because i want to make sure that this is clear you know this wiring in this trailer is 40 years old this is a perfect example of a great trailer that's stout sturdy strong and the steel in it is nowhere near from its life expectancy being consumed this trailer my dad built this trailer um, i was in diapers when he built this this is somewhere between 84 87 he can't remember exactly but it was a long time ago and he slammed this thing together he built this trailer and i kid you not 24 hours he was a welder that's what he did for a living he was a, he had a manufacturing shop and he built ornamental iron gates locking stanchions for dairies trailers all kinds of stuff and he had a load to haul and no trailer and so he said i'm gonna build me a trailer real fast and he did build it real fast it had two axles under it he said he started uh like six five or six in the morning and he said the following morning at 8 a.m he had it hooked up to his pickup and he was ready to rock and roll and he said there was no paint no paint on the trailer it was all bare steel and i don't i think the wiring the lights he said only had lights in the back no lights in the center right there just the lights and i don't think he had them up in the neck yet but um had it wired and had it was a two axle at that time he said the third axle he added added later uh, when he realized he he needed some more brake on the trailer it was mainly for uh braking is what he wanted that for but yeah slammed this together in 24 hours and he was rolling with it behind the pickup so good trailer um and so i asked him i said you know the wiring in this trailer i said why why is the wiring like that you know why you got the the scotch taps you've got lots of loom and everything and he said hey back then we didn't have some of the wiring and some of the stuff that uh we're using today it's like some of this phillips cord with a nice black you know insulated cord and everything he said that some of that wasn't there wasn't nearly that you know kind of option and stuff to get and so um but it's held up for 30 at least 30 years i've been patching it together here and there for the last about five years so um let's get started on running some wire so now one trick that i've learned working on trailers building trailers building flatbeds and stuff is how important it is to don't forget about wiring mounts being able to secure your wiring in place and so many older trailers I've found that working on it is that stuff's just kind of hanging out and not really clamped in place good. And you know, you see like my new North Star SD, they've got clamps that you bend back and forth and whatnot. It's definitely better than nothing, but it's not what I personally would use. And because, you know, I've had issues like with this trailer right here. It's, you know, hit a few bumps, boom. There's your wiring hanging down like that. And that, that's, that's just not gonna work. So I've come up with something really, really high tech. Quarter inch bolt. Simple as that. You weld a quarter inch bolt to where it is, wherever it is that you want, and then you can put your P-clip right onto it. Nice and tight. It's not moving, it's not going anywhere. It's not pinched by something. It's held in tightly that this will last basically forever. So that's what I go with. Okay, there we go. We're welded on. See, and then you just take and slide this on. Hang on here. See, and then take and put your nut on, tighten it down right there. Now I welded myself a tab. I'll drill that hole out further, and I'm going to put a toggle switch right here. So, with these lights here that I have up on top, I used to use these as backup lights, but I'm going to wire the 12 volt positive 
um, in the wiring harness right here to the switch and then I'll be able to flip the toggle switch on flip it on and then light these lights up if I want yes it will send it will back feed to my backup lights on the truck but that's not a big deal because when I'm at night we spray a lot at night time and so it's nice having that's why I have so much if you if you follow my videos and the truck stuff you know I have a lot of lights and stuff on my rigs and because yeah we wind up working a lot at night and um, <clears throat> I like to have stuff lit up because it's hard to see in the dark. So then coming across here and then we got this little guy right here. Might be wondering what, what's that for? Well, I'll tell you what that's for. That is for, you'll have to watch my intro and that'll give you a clue. And we'll see that at the end of the video. wired up and I use the metal plugs not the plastic ones I don't know I just like the metal ones better that's the kind of crap right there that's why we're doing this look at that it's just <sighs> yeah <clears throat> not good well what I'm doing right now is I'm making my wiring harness for these three lights across here and instead of crawling around underneath the darn trailer i'm gonna sit right here and build this right here and my plan is is because i can see the spacing and everything so it's easy instead because my neck honestly is starting to kill me because i'm on like hour number nine of building this harness and uh it gets a little tiring after a while so the other thing is, is I've stepped down my wire size. I've got quite a bit of wire uh, that I keep on hand. And I'm dropping this down to a 16 gauge wire. These are all um, LED lights. Um, and their amperage draw obviously is super low. Um, so there's no reason to have big old fat 10 gauge wire. Um, in fact, I've dropped my gauge size as I worked, worked my way to the back of the trailer, um, I've actually dropped gauge size. Even like the electric brakes, with this being a three axle, uh, I've got a 10 gauge wire coming to the front axle. It carries over to the second axle, and then I drop all the way down to, I think, a 14 gauge wire going to the third axle. Because again, you start dumping amperage load. Um, so back here, um, like I said, I'm just trying to wire up these pigtails at the moment and a chance to kind of rest my neck where I don't have to be crawling around underneath there where my spacing on these three lights are all right here so I can just do it and um, make it easy. Okay, I just finally finished. I've got about seven, eight hours in rewiring this trailer and I'm done, I'm all finished. So here is all the wiring that came out of that trailer and bad spots all over the place. So I'm gonna show you from beginning, from the front of the trailer all the way to the back of the trailer, how I wired this and, and the little steps and and uh, whatnots that I did to get the wire secure 
and wired correctly and safely where I feel like it will last another 35 years. So, starting up here at the front, here's our seven way plug. Up, coming over, here's the cord. And the cord then goes down and goes under the trailer. Coming back up is two lines, two by 14 is what this is, 14 gauge. And it comes up, this is my clearance lights. Now this is something that we do, um, for whatever reason, I don't see it as very common in other trailers, but we put lights up in the neck. So I've got a two inch round there, got a two inch round in there, same thing on the other side. And so you can see where I ran my cord, my two by 14 comes across. There's my purple light right there, my bullet light. And <clears throat> there is the Maxima Clear Ambers on the outside. So that covers getting the uh, clearance power up here. Now the other thing is the second cord coming up goes to a switch that I installed and that turns these guys on right here i've got two of them again as i was saying we do a lot of spraying at night time and uh so you know having some having really good lighting is important when you're working at night so and the way i wired this is the backup power is coming up here it is on one side of the switch and the 12 volt battery hot is on the other side of the switch so when i put it in reverse power goes straight to the lights that's not an issue so that all works wor works the same and then the switch then keeps the backup circuit isolated from the 12 volt battery hot now when i turn the 12 volt battery hot it lights up the two lights on top of, obviously and yes then it does back feed and go to the truck and turn on the truck's backup lights is that a big deal? No. I mean, for me, it's not because of anything. It actually, uh, more light is better. So the only thing I see with this, I only put one anchor in. Um, I think I'm probably going to go ahead and add maybe even two more. So, um, okay. Now here's an important step in a lot of trailers don't have this. And my experience with um, you know, big techs, PJ, that sort of thing. I have a big tex and the wiring is junk in it. Other than that, <coughs> excuse me, and an interstate enclosed trailer, those are the only two trailers that I have that we haven't built in house. So, um, the big tex, the wiring was very unimpressive. Here is what a guy needs. Here's your box. That's a good Phillips um commercial trailer style box and everything comes in and feeds off of this so here's the seven way cord that comes from the truck that lights the whole box up right and then coming back out is the seven way cord that continues down the frame rail now the thing is is every then every circuit down the lights up in the neck the um 12 volt battery hot going up to those two square lights up there floodlights um, and then up here, we're going to the side marker lights at the front of the flatbed. Everything then can be, if, you know, if I have a problem down the road and all of a sudden I'm blowing a fuse and I've got no clearance lights and I can't, you know, just quickly kind of figure out where it's at, I can come over here and take the stud off, take all the eyelets off of the stud on the clearance light stud and then I can one by one start adding each circuit until I blow the fuse again. Now I know which circuit I need to be chasing down. Because sometimes wires can be funny and it's hard to find that wire that's rubbed through in a certain spot. So <clears throat> moving along. Now my dad originally ran his wires through this pipe. I could not get this big fat seven way cord in. So again I welded in studs along here and then it just kind of sits nicely in that trough of that pipe and it goes under that cross member it's tight it's not coming out now and then down here there's a junction we've got a transition from seven way 10 gauge to 
um, I think, what is that? That's uh, 14 gauge, 6 wire. 7 wire, 10 gauge, 6 wire, 14 gauge. I dropped a wire because there is the battery hot right there poking up. Um, I don't think that I need battery hot all the way to the back of the trailer. This trailer is set up kind of as a special purpose. And I thought, you know, if I ever need like a 12 volt pump or something, as you can see, I got tanks and stuff on this trailer. Um, it's more than likely going to be towards the front anyway. And there it is right there if I want to tap into it. Um, so coming across, we've got clearance lights going out to the side marker light, coming across, going to the other side marker light, electric brakes. That's the, um, so I ran 10 gauge wire. I couldn't get to a 10 by two cord. So I went ahead and just ran, uh, some 10 gauge wire, uh, and went ahead and loomed it, but it's pretty tight. Everything looks good. Now, here's the thing with electric brakes is you've got to have some slack in your electric brakes running along the frame rail. Now that's different. You want things tight. That's what helps save you down the road from having wires come loose, having wires rub a hole in themselves. But when you've got spring suspension and electric brakes, now is when you need some slack. So you do need to have a certain amount of <coughs> wobbly wobbly down here. And I do, this is, hang on here. This is definitely, I've got, I've got this has the ability to move around and flex a little bit and come you know either towards the back of the trailer or the front of the trailer yes that will five years from now or whatever that will something will come loose um if someone has a better idea on how to get trailer brake wires to um never have a problem hey give it to me in the comments because i always just know my trailer brake wires, I got to, you know, keep track of them because every once in a while, one of them's going to break. And, and like I said, I've tried to get them, you know, nice and tight to where I think I have just enough play. No, you drop off somewhere, boom, you pull a, pull a wire right out because you didn't have as much slack as you thought you did. So continuing on, I didn't have enough room to go under that cross member. I had to go over the top. You can see right there, we've got a stud. It holds it in place and then further down also let's head to the back of the trailer two marker clearance lights right there and there is I'm running both of these lights are wired exactly the same um, stop turn and tail and coming across there's the six-way cord comes in it splits up there to go to the left obviously then to go to the right comes across here I've got all my studs in place to hold everything nice and tight uh, I wound up instead of running three cord that was the wrong color I wound up and just ran two cord here the two, the two by 14 and that's got my clearance and my ground in it and I and to get my left hand blinker I just ran a yellow wire as you can see what I did there and I'm not too worried about it because this is all strong. This is not moving. This wiring harness is going to stay rigid with the trailer as it moves up and down bumps and whatnot. I'm not really worried about the wire getting damaged. So, um, going across, same thing on the other side. Driver's side uh, looks identical to the passenger side. There's my cord that continues and goes out to the back of the trailer. And my seven-way plug going to the pull trailer. And there it is from front to back. My complete rewire job. Like I said, took me about seven, eight hours, somewhere in there. Main thing is take your time. Make sure you get good, solid crimps. You've got good tools you're working with. Don't, don't buy your all your terminal connections at Harbor Freight or whatever their kits are. Get good uh, Pico or you know good from an automotive store uh, good terminal kits that's important and so yeah take your time wiring is a thing that you can't rush it's like body work or paint you rush it and the results will show so um, there you go I'm looking forward to pulling this trailer around a lot this summer this season and uh, hooking up to it plugging in everything works 
no rolling around underneath trying to figure out what the heck happened over here at this corner and um it's good to get it rewired and all wrapped up thanks for watching i hope this video is helpful for you hope you learned something if you got something to show me to teach me tell me in the comments if you like the video please subscribe see you on the next one thank you